Hi everyone, I'm Joaquin Beltran. I'm the creator of Speak Up America, and I'm here with Yanir. Uh, Yanir, please uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Okay, so I'm Yanir Baryam. I'm the president and professor at the New England Complex Systems Institute, and I've founded End Coronavirus in order to help us get rid of this uh, terrible disease. And so one of the focus areas of ncoronavirus.org are green zones. So we thought we'd share a little bit about what green zones are um, and have Yanir uh, expand on this for us. So Yanir, um, please tell us, what are green zones? So a green zone is an area that has no transmission within a certain period of time, specifically 14 days, uh, which basically means there is uh, quite a bit of safety in starting to uh, relax restrictions or opening up without being afraid that there will be transmission in the community. That's what it's about. Okay, and so can you expand more on the benefits of having a green zone? Right, so the first benefit, so, so part of the idea of green zone, which I didn't yet say, is that it's important to limit the travel in and out of a green zone. Right, because what you want to do is you want to protect areas where you don't have the disease. And if you do that, there are two very important effects. The first one is um, that if you have travel restrictions, then you're able to regulate the uh, disease so that you can effectively get to the condition where you don't have transmission. And then the second advantage is that you can reopen to normal without waiting for other areas that may not be as in as good a state. So if we have some area over here that has no cases, we can open up. We can go to restaurants and bars and, and, and open schools without any dangers and, and theater and, and so on and, and have social events that we don't have to worry about that there's going to be transmission. And that's the kind of thing that we're all looking for. So I think this idea of green zones is very powerful, uh, but there's a lot of people who are skeptical about this and say that there's no way that, you know, we can eliminate this virus, you know? Um, they're, they're showing that, you know, hey, in New Zealand, right? They eliminated the virus, but then new community transmission came in, right? So, um, so what would you say to that? So the point is that you can think about it like firefighting. You know, it's, it's always true that you might have a fire in the future in some place or at some time. And for that, we have firefighters to fight it. But you don't want to have a blaze going all the time, right? So if you have a fire in your house, you put it out. And once you put it out, you know that you still have to be aware that you might have a fire in the future. But that doesn't mean that you don't want to put it out when you have it. Yeah, I, I think that's a, that's a great response. We see the wildfires that are, are happening in California that happened in Australia. Um, and you see that it's much easier to put out smaller fires, you know, and, and this right. case, smaller outbreaks, right? Um, and I think the resource allocation that comes uh, with that is a huge strength. So how big, how small can green zones be? So um, they can be as small or as large as we can protect, as we can make the circumstances be such that we have uh, the ability to protect them. The key thing is that you can have them even as small as, say, a city block or a neighborhood or something like that. And you can have them as large as a continent or the world, right? That's the idea where we would like to get to. So the point is that by having... Um, the ability to have them different sizes, what you can do is you can set things up so that you progressively start with green zones that may be small, but you can progressively grow them and combine them together in order to create larger and larger green zones. Okay, so say um, I want to create a green zone in my community, right? So how can I contribute to creating a green zone uh, with my friends, with my colleagues? So first of all, it, the, if you decide as a community to do it, if you get together with uh, your friends in the community and say, we all want to do this together, then we have to do the things that will stop transmission so that we get down to zero. And we're, we, we, we're going to do all of the social distancing and masks and so on and take care of people who have 
who have the disease so they don't transmit, and all of the things that we know will stop the disease. And then the disease will, the, the transmission will fall rapidly. And if we do that consistently and effectively, it only needs to take a few weeks. It depends where we're starting from. If we have a few cases to begin with, it can take a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks. If we have more cases, then it'll take four or five weeks, but it doesn't have to take a long time. And, and so the, the, the key is to really work hard at getting to no cases. And once you have no cases, and again, you have to have no cases for some amount of time before you can feel safe. Um, and then we can uh, use the fact that it's a green zone to open up and get back. So um, in closing, closing up the um, green zone conversation, is there anything else you'd like to share with people um, to help them on their way to creating green zones in their own communities? So it, there are two ways to do it. One is bottom up where everyone collaborates and takes care of it. The other way is participating with top down. Always the community has to take responsibility and ownership. If we can get help from other organizations and maybe for governments that can be important uh, because they can provide support for what's being done. Uh, but we don't have to wait, that's important. If we're ready to go ahead and we can do it, then we can just do it and get it to happen. And we can also again build up multiple parts of green zones. So, if you have a city area, you can make green zones that are one block at a time and combine them together uh, like building blocks to make a larger area and to have um, areas that are also commercial and residential work together and industrial work together to make larger green zones. So there are very different ways to do it. But the basic idea that we understand, which is that if the local people, local community takes responsibility and says, we want to be in the normal world where we don't have the outbreak, we can do it. And we know what has to be done in many parts of the world we've had rapidly dropping numbers of cases. We just have to sometimes be a little bit more patient to get to zero and we have to agree that we will be careful so that non-essential travel, not essential travel, essential travel we have to be careful, we have to watch for, we have to take precautions, but the main thing is to reduce the non-essential travel because that makes bringing in cases into a green zone much, much less likely. Uh, I think this idea of creating green zones is exactly what we need to be focused on. Um, you know, it, it's the goal of eliminating this virus um, and getting back to a place where you don't have to worry about getting it or, or, or transmitting it. Um, yeah. So I'm fully on board um, and, and can't wait for all these green zones to start sprouting up all over the United States, all over the world. Um, so thank you so much, Yanir, for uh, sharing all this work you're doing with us um, and uh, look forward uh, to more videos on more information from ncoronavirus.org.